Hello everyone and welcome. This is IceCard and in today's video we're going to talk about multi-classing and what we know so far. Honestly, I think everyone can agree with me when I say that we have absolutely been bombarded with information over the last couple of weeks. We got yet another community update, number 21. We also have an article being published on an Italian website which covers uh, a bit of extra information. Right, so let's hop into the Larian community update first. There's literally two bits of information I want to hone in. One of them is directly with respect to multi-classing, the other one is um, respecking, which also indirectly affects multi-classing. So, a bit of information that's really important here for multi-classing is the fact that they've removed ability score prerequisites. And therefore, as they give an example here, for instance, uh, you no longer need 13 charisma to be able to multi-class into a warlock. Again, that's massive. That opens up untold windows, untold possibilities. It's, it's insane news. I'm not sure how the hardcore D&D players will um, take this, but it's in the game. And then moving on, respecking. Again, as they say, controversial, probably, but I think it's necessary given the fact that um, your average Joe wouldn't have a clue about uh, multiclassing. I think it's a really good idea to actually introduce respecking. And again, I'm not sure, <laughs> honestly, I'm not sure why everyone being, is being so secretive about this one particular NPC, right? So, come on, it's effing withers. We all know it's effing withers. I don't know whether this is a joke or not, but <laughs> it's effing withers, guys. So that was uh, it with respect to what I wanted to touch on from the community update. And then if we hop into this Italian article... I must apologize, my Italian is ter terrible, absolutely terrible, guys. The only thing I probably um, know how to say is buongiorno, and, and that's it. So I, I used the infamous Google Translate on this. It might not be a fully accurate uh, translation, and I apologize for that, but I've used um, <clears throat> Google Translate. So these guys here apparently had a quick interview with um, Nick Pachenin, who is basically the lead systems designer. So who best to talk about multiclassing than Nick? I think that's a really good question. No one is the answer. So Nick has the answers, guys. Nick has the answers. Let's see what he actually said. So here, again, the article mentions that they've dropped the prerequisite stats and therefore you can cosplay a barbarian with eight strength and you'd be fine, right? No, you wouldn't, is the answer. No, you wouldn't. So scrolling down a bit further, they start giving an example of, about how they've actually tweaked the um, the rules, let's say, of multiclassing. So they mention the spell Fireball and the fact that obviously a pure class would get it at level 5. It doesn't say that in the article, but we know that we get it at level 5. And then they go on to say that obviously if you've multiclassed into something else, you wouldn't necessarily gain access to Fireball until later on in reality, if you're using D&D rules. But in they kind of imply that you would in Baldur's Gate 3. So I'm actually baffled. I don't have a clue how it's going to work. They don't give us any detail whatsoever. So in honesty... We will have to wait until the game is released to actually be able to tell you. So I don't know whether this is a good or bad thing. It definitely throws any potential class balance out the window. I mean, D&D already as it is, it isn't really balanced at all. And there's seemingly even less balance now with this change. I'm I'm a bit confused. <clears throat> Potentially overall, it's, a, it's a more, definitely more fun. Let's put it that way. But balancing that is going to be a nightmare. I'm just extremely curious to see how and if they've balanced stuff in the game. So then scrolling down a bit furthermore, they mention the intellect bandana. That's uh, Google Translate uh, playing tricks on us. It's the band of intellect that we all know you can get from the ogres in the Blighted Village. So that gives your intelligence stats or your intellect stat a boost up to 17. It's obviously really good and a very niche item for specific builds. I guess you could tailor your entire build around it. Who knows? 
I'm fully aware there's another item boosting uh, as one specific stat. It's a one-hand club of sorts. You can get it by breaking a stool up uh, at the roof level of Lenore's tower. So if you actually throw the stool, it smashes, and you get uh, a, a magic item out of it, that's the cl- club, and it boosts your strength up to 15. So that's another one. I'm sure they're going to be introducing loads of these within the game. I guess we will probably see a belt of giant strength or something along those lines. What I think what Nick Pachenin here was trying to get at is that the possibilities of build making are endless, especially if you take into account adding in these items as well. So honestly, that's all, folks. That's all I wanted to cover in today's video. It's a summary of the information that has been released to date, which is very limited and extremely confusing, to say the least. If I'm going to be completely honest, uh, and uh, if you wanted my advice, any guides were out there, take them with a pinch of salt. Any multi-classing guides, we don't know exactly what's going in the game take them with a pinch of salt. It may give you a flavor of how that specific combination of classes plays, but be mindful that you won't have all the information and whoever is actually creating these guides doesn't have all the information. Keep that in mind. Thank you, everyone. Take care, and I will catch you on the next one.